Hello everyone, Vito's a fifty back with another how to play. This is money. Money, 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 money. Money. <laughs> and this is by Rhino Kenichi, another cool game from him. It's a game of international currency collection. And I think this is a travel sized version that I got. It is what it is. <laughs> it is three to five players, ages ten and up. About 20 to 30 minutes, you get 63 currency cards, zero coin cards, or six, six coin cards, sorry, not zero. I don't know where zero came from. Five bluff cards and five rules cards. These are the rules. And these are the bluff cards. And each player is going to get one of these bluff cards, if they have a hand, to start off with. Oh, leave his face down. That's the back design, by the way. The currency is pretty cool. Now, it's not authentic currency, obviously. They've added, you know, these thread numbers <laughs> to all of them. They've modified them a little bit, but I believe this is China. This is Brazil, as it says. Um, so, it's a little bit harder. These are the coin ones. They're 10 each. This one is England with the queen on there. And this, that, that dude, that's, I think that's Ryan Akiritia, or his son. Um, that's pretty cool. And this one is, is Australia, it says on the side. And then there is, this is Canada, you know, it says the Congo of Griffin, because of the ice hockey that's seen on Canadian money. And... Yes, there is Americana. America. America. Sorry, and then there's this one, which is... I think that's Italy, or the Euro, actually. That's what that is. The Euro, as indicated by the stars and everything. So, yeah, pretty interesting. So, each person is going to get this bluff card. I'll explain why you would want that. It's a 74-card deck. Seven currencies, nine cards in each currency. Three with a value of 20, three with a value of 30, and one each with a value of 40, 50, and 60. Six of the Chinese coin cards with a value of 10. And the Griffin Games bank cards or bluff cards. Each player gets a bluff card. Surplus bluff cards get put back in the box. And he shuffle these up along with the coin cards. You get deal six to each player face down. That's your six. Uh, let me just see if I can zoom out. I guess that's about it for zooming out. <laughs> All right. So then you're going to look at your card, and you're going to kind of determine, you know, what it is you might want to collect. You're trying to collect sets of cards here. Now, I should mention, I didn't do this, but if you're playing with four people, you're going to remove all the cards of one currency and return to the box. If you're playing with three, you're going to remove all the cards of two currencies and return to the box. We didn't do that, so it is what it is. <laughs> and, of course, this is part of your hand, the bluff card. I kind of look at what everyone else has. They got a lot of Americans, so they're probably going for that. They've got a lot of the Brazilian, I believe it is. And you're going to want a piece of paper and a pencil or a pen to keep score. So everyone's going to have seven cards to start off with. Now you're going to take four cards off the top of the deck. And you're going to take four 
and draw them to this side of the deck. <laughs> I'm hoping you can see all these cards. Perfect. I believe you can. So you get, you're going to draw four to one side and then four to the other side. It says, first it's to the right and then it's to the left. I know. Yeah. <laughs> it says do horizontal like that. So you're editing, entering the volatile currency market. And this is your holding, your small holding that builds three successive trades into your currency portfolio. And you're going to use bids and trades to increase the value of your hands. And these are the new coins and dollars offered on the market. Now you can you're gonna start off by you know, looking at what's there and deciding what you're going to bid. You can bid as many cards as you want or as few as you want. So maybe I say I want to bid this, this, and this for trying to get these two because I already have a British one, and I mean maybe I can even I don't know if I can get that one. I want to double check. So I'm gonna bid these face down. This guy's looking for American, he's looking for that. Uh, maybe he decides to play these face down. And then the last player is gonna go, he really wants the Brazilian. Or maybe he just wants to go for the Euro, or who knows. And maybe he plays these two face down. So, And you can include any or all the cards you hand. You can bid one, you can bid all of them if you really wanted to. Once everyone's ready, you're gonna reveal your bids. And yes, you can use the bluff cards. The reason for the bluff card is, you know, this way, instead of playing two cards, I play three cards. They don't know what this is. It could be anything. So this can cause the next player to go, you know what, I'm going to bid more than what I was originally planning. Everyone reveals their bids. Now the bluff cards have no value. And they're going to go back into your hand after this is done, so you can just do that. But we'll just leave that there for now. So yeah, yeah. If you include a bluff card, you return it to your hand. So the value of your bid is the total you bid. So I bid 70, this guy bid 70 as well, and this guy bid just 10. Whoever has the highest bid begins for round. Now, if there is a tie, it's broken by looking at the serial number, and whoever has the lowest number, I got 58 and 65. This guy has 40 and 45, so he's gonna win the tie. So you're gonna look at these serial numbers. Whoever has the lowest one in the terms of a tie is gonna win. So he broke the tie, he wins the tie. Couple of things to keep in mind when you're bidding. If, at the end of the game, the cumulative value of one currency in a player's holdings is 200 or greater, they get the full value of the currency. If it's less than 200, then 100 points will be subtracted from the total score. If the resulting value is less than zero, they score zero and not a negative value. Coins always keep their value 
of 10 points. If a player has a triplet, meaning they have all three banknotes of a single currency with a value of 20 or 30, they receive a bonus of 100 points. So I got two 30s. If I get the next 30, which he happens to have, so it's not going to happen, I would score a bonus for a triplet. This guy is close to that. In fact, he will have a triplet if he gets that card that he wants. He might not. <laughs> So, the person with the highest bid, that was him. That was him over there. He can take one of the following free actions, he or C. They can exchange those two cards from... All of these cards are all of these cards, the right or the left. Using the bit cards. He can exchange his bit cards for another player's bid and take all the cards from another player's bid. Or he doesn't have to exchange. He could take back his cards. So this player could take back these cards into his hand if he wants to. He can exchange these for these four or these four. Or he can exchange them for, I mean, he doesn't want that $10, but he could exchange it for this card that I bid. But maybe he doesn't do that. Um, he's looking for the green card. So he decides to take these ones. Once he does that, these ones come over here. I was the next highest bid. I was looking for those pounds that he took, but I will take these instead and give myself a triplet. And I'm gonna put these here instead. Now, this guy is gonna, he's the last one. And he decides he wants to take these two. And he takes them and he puts this coin here. And of course, he's going to put this back in his hand. So now you're going to replenish this with four new cards. And you're going to do the same thing all over again. Wow, they're all ten, ten coins. <laughs> and you're going, to, you're going to do the same thing again. And you're going to go around and around until you've gone through all the cards in this stack. And then at the end, like I said, you're going to get bonus points if you have a bunch of cards in the same currency. You get bonus points. I would get a bonus points for having a triplet, free 30s. If you have free 30s or free 20s of the same currency, you get bonus. This guy does not. I was just checking. And again, you don't have to make exchange. You could just take back your cards going, eh, I don't want any cards. In this case, it made sense for people to take cards. If you already have four cards and you don't need to replenish anything, obviously. So once everyone's done that, you're going to sort your cards according to currencies, sum the values of each currency, subtract 100 points from each currency worth less than 200 points. So, you know, if I had this, I have less than 200 on these, so I'd subtract 100 from that, that would be a negative. And add 100 points for each triplet, so I still get 100 points for this triplet. I would get nothing for any of these, so... You know, by the end of the game, you're going to have a bunch of cards, a bunch of different currencies, and you're going to add the points. And there's some examples there. If you hold all nine banknotes of a particular currency, you get 500 points, which is the actual value of 300 total, as you can get, plus a bonus of 200 for the triplet bonuses for the 20s and 30s. So you would get 
free 30s, you get free 20s, and the whole value plus, the, you know, the bonuses. So 500 points if you get all nine of the same currency, which is probably not the easiest thing to do. Whoever has the highest score, of course, at the end of the final round is the winner. And they say that once people have played through it and understand the rules, they, they find that people may want to play it through three times the highest curative score at the end of the third game, indicating the winner. So again, we can kind of go through again this quickly. Another round. So maybe I bid, oof, I'm going to bid 50 plus the bluff card. This guy. Maybe he bids 70. Not so why, but he does. And then this guy looks at his hand. He's not too interested in anything that's out there. Um, maybe he just decides to pass. He decides he's not going to be involved. Actually, he, he's going to be involved. You have to be involved, I guess. Maybe he just bids that. So then everyone reveals the bids. I bid 50. This guy beat me with uh, 70, and this guy just bid 10. So he's going to go first. He decides what's he going to do. He decides he's going to exchange that for these cards. And give himself a 20 there. He gets some euros, and he gets one of these. Then it's my turn. I'm... What do I want to go for? I guess I'll go for the pound here. And Actually, no, I don't want to do that because I'd be exchanging these for that. I'm just going to keep what I have. I'm just going to keep what I have. And this guy, he decides, yeah, I'm going to exchange this 10... For all of this and that adds to his Brazilian dolls I don't know what they're called <laughs> and he puts this here so yeah that's another round there it's pretty interesting I think my battery's starting to die so I'm gonna have to wrap it up but I think it's pretty cool I like the currencies some people I've seen would have preferred fake currencies I kind of like that it's real currencies and yeah that is that I like it Comment, like, subscribe. Let me know what you think. We'll see you next time for more things for watching.